One of the most unexpected breakout players this year has been Denver slot corner Jaquan McMillan. He was an undrafted free agent out of East Carolina, didn't play much as a rookie, but he came into the lineup in week four, and he's been a major part of Denver's defensive turnaround. He's a smart, instinctive player in zone coverage. He isn't perfect in man-to-man, -man, but he can hold up pretty well, and I think he's already one of the best run-defending slots in the NFL. And that's actually where I want to start with this video. A lot of times we think of a corner main responsibility being coverage, but what Jaquan McMillan has added as far as the ability to play nickel and still defend the run, I think has been so valuable. On any given play, the two biggest mismatches that Denver's defense has to their advantage is Patrick Sertan versus whoever he's covering and Jaquan McMillan versus whatever receiver is trying to block him on the outside. The difference in effort, tenacity, level of activity on these screen passes, toss sweeps, you just can't ignore. He's firing his hands into every single block, trying to shed and disengage. And it shows up anytime you watch a Broncos game, it's showing up in the numbers as well. Right now he's PFF's highest graded run defending corner. On this play against Buffalo, he stacks the block, disengages, rips the ball out from James Cook, gets his own recovery. And then later in that game, they try to run a crack toss, which gave Denver's defense fits early in the season. The left tackle Deion Dawkins is trying to pull and climb to him downfield. He does a great job dipping this inside shoulder to cause him to miss the block. And then he sets the edge and closes in for the tackle with DJ Jones. Pretty much the exact same play here against the Chiefs in week eight. Again, they're running crack toss. The left tackle's pulling, trying to reach him down the field, but at the last second, he dips the shoulder, establishes outside leverage, causes the blocker to miss with his hands, and he forces Isaiah Pacheco out of bounds. Right here from the other Chiefs matchup, they're trying to run it to the opposite side. Good job first by Ronnie Perkins of shooting into the backfield. He ends up making the tackle, but even if he would have missed this, he's forcing Pacheco to widen out his path. And then McMillan fights through this block from Jawan Taylor and they combine for the tackle for loss. Before I sat down to record this, I actually went and rewatched all of the outside runs from the Dolphins game. McMillan didn't play in that game, but I wanted to go into this recording with that in my mind to contrast what they had in terms of run defense from their slot corner. Obviously, McMillan wouldn't have won them the game, but if he was in there instead of a saying Bassey, the Dolphins might have only scored 60. Right here, the Chiefs throw a swing pass to Jarek McKinnon. McMillan undercuts this block from Rasheed Rice, which is kind of the shortcut way of defeating the block. So it gives him a more difficult path and angle to making this tackle, but he has the explosiveness to make up that distance and he takes him down by the shoestrings. Same thing going on here. This time they run a jet sweep to Kadarius Tony. Again, he undercuts Rasheed Rice and then he has the closing speed and change of direction to finish this tackle. So McMillan's done a lot of great things this year, but what sticks out most consistently is his block shedding ability and how he defends outside runs. And the best defenses in the NFL are teams that can defend the run out of nickel. If you're enjoying the video, make sure to subscribe and leave a like and also follow us on all of our social medias. The links to those are in the description. But he's really a Swiss army knife type of player. This interception against Kansas City was the first time that he caught my attention. And this type of play is such a good litmus test for a linebacker, slot corner, safety in terms of their route recognition and feel and zone coverage. When you're in this situation where you're dropping back into the hook zone, you've got eyes on the quarterback and then a receiver that stems outside of you. The way that you defend in this situation tells me like 50% of what I need to know about your zone coverage ability. The reason that Patrick Mahomes and a lot of quarterbacks will throw this route is because there's a lot of defenders in the NFL that are going to spot drop, they're going to cover grass, they'll stare at the quarterback and they'll let the routes develop behind them and there's going to be a wide open window to hit this dig route or glance or whatever you want to call it. But the ability to recognize that they're trying to set him up here and create space over the middle, that shows me that McMillan knows what he's doing in zone coverage. I remember I was watching this play going through the tape for the uh, Baron Browning video and I immediately wrote down Jaquan McMillan's name as someone that I should cover later. But the rest of his tape did not disappoint. Here's another example of his ability to watch the quarterback and know what's developing behind him. He sees Patrick Mahomes rolling out of the pocket. He doesn't actually see the speed out from Kadarius Tony developing, but you're not going to call a sprint out with nothing in the flat. So he just widens out, watches the quarterback, stays in front of the passing window and forces an incompletion. Right here, they run a reverse flea flicker with Jarek McKinnon leaking out on a wheel route. McMillan doesn't fall for the trick play. He gets depth and forces a contested target. And then right here, you see the closing burst out of a back pedal to break up this pass to Gerald Everett. Good job playing the ball here, splits the receiver's hands and gets a pass breakup. I want to show his athletic testing just as a good example of how these combine numbers, I think they do mean something, but they aren't always an accurate representation of how someone moves on the football field. This is probably why he went undrafted. He's undersized from a small school. He ran a 
six, didn't really have any elite athletic testing outside of the three cone, but watching him move on the football field, he's much faster than his 40 time. He doesn't have any issue keeping up with receivers vertically that ran four fours. I think the short area quickness is there as it applies to man coverage ability. So we'll get into it. The size does show up, not in run defense, but sometimes in coverage. But as far as movement skills, I think he has everything you need. On a snap to snap basis, he's been really tight in coverage. He has given up a few plays, four touchdowns allowed, but looking at this chart for separation allowed, he's in the top right corner. So like I said, the lack of size doesn't really impact him in run defense. He's a pretty reliable open field tackler. The one area it is a concern is dealing with physical route runners. If the receiver pushes off at the route break, he's kind of guaranteed to allow some separation. Some of these are valid plays. Some of these you could say are OPI. The thing is though, you can sit here and say like this should have been a pass interference, but if it's not getting called, then it's not a penalty. So he's been really solid in coverage. He hasn't gotten beat much at all. The majority of times he has gotten beat, it's been push offs or just physicality of the route break. So that's the one thing I would say is probably a limitation for Jaquan McMillan. But if he can get a little bit stronger, I think that would definitely help his coverage. So he's given up four touchdowns this year. I'm going to make the executive decision and only charge him with three touchdowns allowed. The first one is this play to DJ Moore trying to flip his hips and accelerate down the field. He loses his footing and falls down. And then this play, Nico Collins kind of puts him in the blender with a double move in the red zone. This is probably the worst rep on his tape, but Nico Collins has developed into one of the better receivers in the NFL. Next play, you get kind of a rub route on the goal line. McMillan can't break on the speed out to get Arius Tony quickly enough because MVS is in the way. If you're not passing off switch releases in short yardage man coverage situations, that's just a really difficult spot to put your defensive backs in. This still is on McMillan. He needs to power through this contact, but it's an understandable play to give up. And then the fourth touchdown, like I said, I'm not counting for the purposes of evaluating Jaquan McMillan. He's playing tight press coverage. Jordan Love tries to hit Romeo Dobbs on this slant, but he throws it behind him. The ball bounces off of his hands right onto Jaden Reed's back shoulder, and he catches it for a touchdown. This is about the unluckiest touchdown allowed that a player could possibly have. I think the next level for Jaquan McMillan is if the Broncos can really unlock him as a blitzer. So he came into the lineup week four. From week four to week 13, he had pretty much one pass rushing snap every single game. Week four, week seven, he didn't rush the passer, but you can see they were sending him on one blitz a game. But then in week 13 against Houston, they sent him on the slot blitz. Brevin Jordan's late to disengage, but good job flashing this right hand, creating even more delay with him sliding over. He bends around the corner, gets the sack on CJ Stroud and forces the fumble. And it's funny because the Broncos coaching staff saw that the very next week, week 14, he gets seven pass rushing snaps and he turns that into five pressures, one sack, one quarterback hit. So all it took was that one strip sack for the Broncos coaching staff to realize we can use this guy as a blitzer also, okay? So that's just another aspect of the game that I expect Jaquan McMillan to impact pretty heavily going forward. So Jaquan McMillan has probably been the Broncos second most valuable player this year, I would say. I'd put Pat Sertan at one, but I think after that, you could make the argument for McMillan or probably Zach Allen, who's really turned it on after a slow start. And that's what you need for a successful defense. You need your stars to play like stars and the lower level guys, at least in terms of expectation, you need some of those to emerge. And they're getting that from Jaquan McMillan. They're also getting it from guys like Fabian Moreau, who has given up some plays, but I think on a snap to snap basis has played really tight coverage. When you blitz as much as the Broncos are this year, the defensive backs are all gonna give up plays to a certain extent whenever the blitz doesn't get home. And then I've also got to shout out PJ Locke, another UDFA. He's in his fourth year. I had never really watched him until this year. I don't think he got much playing time, but once a game, he's gonna lay a huge hit over the middle of the field and break up a pass. And he's also gonna get a sack once per game, it seems like on a safety blitz. So I'm excited to see what this defense is able to do over this last stretch of the season. The Broncos dug themselves a hole, obviously early in the year, but this is a playoff defense. And as a neutral observer, they're a team that I'm rooting for to make the playoffs because they just have so many players that are fun to watch. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Also, let me know in the comments any NFL players or teams that you'd like me to cover.